Chrono Cross. The story of Chrono Cross focuses on a teenage boy named Serge in a theme of parallel worlds. Faced with an alternate reality in which he died as a child, Serge endeavors to discover the truth of the two worlds' divergence. The flashy thief kid and many other characters assist him in his travels around the tropical archipelago El Nido. Struggling to uncover his past and find the mysterious frozen flame, Serge is chiefly challenged by Lynx, a shadowy antagonist working to apprehend him. Upon its release in Japan in 1999 and North America in 2000, Chrono Cross received critical acclaim, earning a perfect 10.0 score from GameSpot. The game shipped over copies worldwide, leading to a greatest hits re-release and continued life in Japan as part of the Ultimate Histories. Chrono Cross was later re-released for the PlayStation Network in Japan in July 2011, and in North America four months later. Chrono Cross features standard role-playing video game gameplay with some differences. Players advance the game by controlling the protagonist's surge through the game's world, primarily by foot and boat. Navigation between areas is conducted via an overworld map, much like Chrono Triggers, depicting the landscape from a scaled-down overhead view. Around the island world are villages, outdoor areas, and dungeons, through which the player moves in three dimensions. Locations such as cities and forests are represented by more realistically scaled field maps, in which players can converse with locals to procure items and services, solve puzzles and challenges, or encounter enemies. Like Chrono Trigger, the game features no random encounters, enemies are openly visible on field maps or lie in wait to ambush the party. Touching the monster switches perspectives to a battle screen, in which players can physically attack, use elements, defend, or run away from the enemy. Battles are turn-based, allowing the player infinite time to select an action from the available menu. For both the playable characters and the computer-controlled enemies, each attack reduces their number of hit points, a numerically based life bar, which can be restored through some elements. When a playable character loses all hit points, he or she faints. If all the player's characters fall in battle, the game ends and must be restored from a previously saved chapter, except for specific storyline-related battles that allow the player to lose. Chrono Cross No Wiki Less Than Slash No Wiki Greater Than S developers aim to break new ground in the genre, and the game features several innovations. For example, players can run away from all conflicts, including boss fights in the final battle. The element system of Chrono Cross handles all magic consumable items, and character-specific abilities. Elements unleash magic effects upon the enemy or party and must be equipped for use, much like the materia of 1997's Final Fantasy VII. Elements can be purchased from shops or found in treasure chests littered throughout areas. Once acquired, they are allocated to a grid whose size and shape are unique to each character. They are ranked according to eight tiers. Certain high-level elements can only be assigned on equivalent tiers in a character's grid. As the game progresses, the grid expands, allowing more elements to be equipped and higher tiers to be accessed. Elements are divided into six paired oppositional types, or colors, each with a natural effect. Red, fire slash magma, opposes blue, water slash ice, green, wind slash flora, opposes yellow, earth slash lightning, and white, light slash cosmos, opposes black, darkness slash gravity. Each character and enemy has an innate color enhancing the power of using same color elements while also making them weak against elements of the opposite color. Chrono Cross also features a field effect, which keeps track of element color used in the upper corner of the battle screen. If the field is purely one color, characters are able to unleash a powerful summon element at the cost of one of the player's stars. The field will also enhance the power of elements of the colors present while weakening elements of the opposite colors. Characters also innately learn some special techniques, techs, that are unique to each character but otherwise act like elements. Like Chrono Trigger, characters can combine certain techs to make more powerful double or triple techs. Consumable elements may be used to restore hit points or heal status ailments after battle. Another innovative aspect of Chrono Cross is its stamina bar. At the beginning of a battle, each character has 7 points of stamina. When a character attacks or uses an element, stamina is decreased proportionally to the potency of the attack. Stamina slowly recovers when the character defends or when other characters perform actions in battle. Characters with stamina below 1 point must wait to take action. Use of an element reduces the user's stamina bar by 7 stamina points. This often means that the user's stamina gauge falls into the negative and the character must wait longer than usual to recover. With each battle, 
players can enhance statistics such as strength and defense. However, no system of experience points exists. After four or five upgrades, statistics remain static until players defeat a boss. This adds a star to a running count shown on the status screen, which allows for another few rounds of statistical increases. Players can equip characters with weapons, armor, helmets, and accessories for use in battle. For example, the power seal upgrades attack power. Items and equipment may be purchased or found on field maps, often in treasure chests. Unlike elements, weapons and armor cannot merely be purchased with money. Instead, the player must obtain base materials, such as copper, bronze, or bone, for a blacksmith to forge for a fee. The items can later be disassembled into their original components at no cost. The existence of two major parallel dimensions, like time periods and chrono trigger, plays a significant role in the game. Players must go back and forth between the worlds to recruit party members, obtain items, and advance the plot. Much of the population of either world have counterparts in the other. Some party members can even visit their other versions. The player must often search for items or places found exclusively in one world. Events in one dimension sometimes have an impact in another, for instance, cooling scorched ground on an island in one world allows vegetation to grow in the other world. This system assists the presentation of certain themes, including the questioning of the importance of one's past decisions and humanity's role in destroying the environment. Rounding out the notable facets of Chrono Cross no wiki less than slash no wiki greater than s gameplay are the new game plus option and multiple endings. As in Chrono Trigger, players who have completed the game may choose to start the game over using data from the previous session. Character levels, learn techniques, equipment, and items gathered copy over, while acquired money and some story related items are discarded. On a new game plus, players can access 12 endings. Scenes view depend on players' progress in the game before the final battle, which can be fought at any time in a New Game Plus file. Chrono Cross features a diverse cast of 45 party members. Each character is outfitted with an innate element affinity and three unique special abilities that are learned over time. If taken to the world opposite their own, characters react to their counterparts, if available. Many characters tie into crucial plot events. Since it is impossible to obtain all 45 characters in one playthrough, players must replay the game to witness everything. Through use of the new Game Plus feature, players can ultimately obtain all characters on one save file. Surge, the game's protagonist, is a 17 year old boy with blue hair who lives in the fishing village of Arnie. One day, he slips into an alternate world in which had round 10 years before. Determined to find the truth behind the incident, he follows a predestined course that leads him to save the world. He is assisted by Kid, a feisty, skilled thief who seeks the mythical frozen flame. Portrayed as willful and tomboyish due to her rough, thieving past, she helps Surge sneak into Viper Manor in order to obtain the frozen flame. Kid vows to find and defeat Lynx, an anthropomorphic panther who burnt down her adopted mother's orphanage. Lynx, a cruel agent of the supercomputer fate is bent on finding Surge and using his body as part of a greater plan involving the frozen flame. Lynx travels with Harl, a mysterious, playful girl dressed like a Harlequin. Harl was sent by the Dragon God to shadow Lynx and one day steal the frozen flame from Chronopolis, a task she painfully fulfills despite being smitten with Surge. To accomplish this goal, Harl helps Lynx manipulate the Acacia Dragoons, the powerful militia governing the islands of El Nido. As the Dragoons maintain order, they contend with Fargo, a former Dragoon turned pirate captain who holds a grudge against their leader, General Viper. Though tussling with Surge initially, the Acacia Dragoons, whose ranks include the fierce warriors Karsh, Zoa, Marcy, and Glenn, later assist him when the militaristic nation of Poor invades the archipelago. The invasion brings Norris and Grobeek to the islands, a heartful commander of an elite force and a prototype cyborg soldier, respectively, as they too seek the frozen flame. The game begins with Surge located in El Nido, a tropical archipelago inhabited by ancient natives, mainland colonists, and beings called demi-humans. Surge slips into an alternate dimension in which he drowned on the beach ten years prior, and meets the thief, Kid. As his adventure proceeds from here, Surge is able to recruit a multitude of allies to his cause. While assisting Kid in a heist viper manner to steal the frozen flame, he learns that ten years before the present, the universe split into two dimensions, one in which Surge lived, and one in which he perished. Through Kid's astral amulet charm, Surge travels between the dimensions. At Fort Dragonia, the use of a Dragonian artifact called the Dragon Tear, Link switches bodies with Surge. 
Unaware of the switch, Kid confides in Lynx, who stabs her as the real Surge helplessly watches. Lynx boasts of his victory and banishes Surge to a strange realm called the Temporal Vortex. He takes Kid under his wing, brainwashing her to believe the real Surge, in Lynx's body, is her enemy. Surge escapes with help from Harl, although his new body turns him into a stranger in his own world, with all the allies he had gained up to that point abandoning him due to his new appearance. Discovering that his new body prevents him from traveling across dimensions, he sets out to regain his former body and learn more of the universal split that occurred ten years earlier, gaining a new band of allies along the way. He travels to a forbidden lagoon known as the Dead Sea, a wasteland frozen in time, dotted with futuristic ruins. At the center, he locates a man named Miguel and presumably Homeworld's frozen flame. Charged with guarding the Dead Sea by an entity named Fate, Miguel and three visions of Chrono, Marl, and Luca from Chrono Trigger explain that Surge's existence dooms Homeworld's future to destruction at the hands of Lavos. To prevent Surge from obtaining the frozen flame, Fate destroys the Dead Sea. Able to return to another world, Surge allies with the Acacia Dragoons against Poor and locates that dimension's Dragon Tear, allowing him to return to his human form. He then enters the Sea of Eden, another world's physical equivalent of the Dead Sea, finding a temporal research facility from the distant future called Chronopolis. Lynx and Kid are inside, Surge defeats Lynx and the supercomputer Fate, allowing the six dragons of El Nido to steal the frozen flame and retire to Terra Tower a massive structure raised from the seafloor. Kid falls into a coma, and Harl bids the party goodbye to fly with the dragons. Surge regroups his party and tends to Kid, who remains comatose. Continuing his adventure, he obtains and cleanses the corrupted Masamuni sword from Chrono Trigger. He then uses the dragon relics and shards of the dragon tears to create the mythic element Chrono Cross. The spiritual power of the Masamuni later allows him to lift Kid from her coma. At Terra Tower, the Prophet of Time, revealed to be both Azar from Chrono Trigger, visits him with visions of Chrono, Marl, and Luca. Surge learns that the time research facility Chronopolis created El Nido thousands of years ago after a catastrophic experimental failure drew it to the past. The introduction of a temporally foreign object in history caused the planet to pull in a counterbalance from a different dimension. This was Dinopolis, a city of Dragonians, Parallel universe descendants of Chrono Trigger no wiki less than slash no wiki greater than s reptites. The institution's ward in Chronopolis subjugated the Dragonians. Humans captured their chief creation, the Dragon God, an entity capable of controlling nature. Chronopolis divided this entity into six pieces and created an element system. Fate and terraformed an archipelago, erased the memories of most Chronopolis staff, and sent them to inhabit and populate its new paradise. Thousands of years later, a panther demon attacked a three-year-old Surge. His father took him to find assistance at Marbuel, but Surge is both blew off course due to a raging magnetic storm caused by Shala. Shala, the princess of the Kingdom of Zeal, had long ago accidentally fallen to a place known as the Darkness Beyond Time and began merging with Lavos, the chief antagonist of Chrono Trigger. Shala's storm nullified Chronopolis's defenses and allowed Surge to contact the Frozen Flame. Approaching it healed Surge but corrupted his father. A circuit in Chronopolis then designated Surge Arbiter, simultaneously preventing Fade from using the frozen flame by extension. The dragons were aware of this situation, creating a seventh dragon under the storm's cover named Harl, who manipulated Lynx to steal the frozen flame for the dragons. After Surge returned home, Fade sent Lynx to kill Surge, hoping that it would release the Arbiter lock. Ten years after Surge drowned, the thief kid presumably in both Azar's orders, went back in time to save Surge and split the dimensions. Fate, locked out of the frozen flame again, knew that Surge would one day cross to another world and prepared to apprehend him. Lynx switched bodies with Surge to dupe the biological check of Chronopolis on the frozen flame. Both Azar then reveals that these events were part of a plan he had orchestrated named Project Kid. Surge continues to the top of Terra Tower and defeats the Dragon God. Continuing to the beach where the split in dimensions had occurred, Surge finds apparitions of Chrono, Marl, and Luca once more. They reveal that both Azar's plan was to empower Surge to free Shala from melding with Lavos, lest they evolve into the Time Devourer, a creature capable of destroying space time. Luca explains that Kid is Shala's clone, sent to the modern age to take part in Project Kid. Surge uses a time egg, given to him by both Azar, to enter the darkness beyond time and vanquish the Time Devourer separating Shala from Lavos and restores the dimensions to one. Thankful, 
Shawa muses on evolution and the struggle of life and returns Serge to his home, noting that he will forget the entire adventure. She then seemingly records the experience in her diary, noting she will always be searching for Serge in this life and beyond, signing the entry as Shawa Kid Zeal, implying that she and Kid have merged and became whole again. A wedding photo of Kid in an obscured male sits one's diary's desk. Scenes then depict the real-life kid searching for someone in a modern city, intending to make players entertain the possibility that their own kid is searching for them. The ambiguous ending leaves the events of the characters' lives following the game up to interpretation. Chrono Cross employs story arcs, characters, and themes from, a satellite view side story to Chrono Trigger released in Japan. Radical Dreamers is an illustrated text adventure which was created to wrap up an unresolved plot line of Chrono Trigger. Though it borrows from Radical Dreamers in its exposition, Chrono Cross is not a remake of Radical Dreamers, but a larger effort to fulfill that game's purpose, the plots of the games are irreconcilable. To resolve continuity issues and acknowledge Radical Dreamers, the developers of Chrono Cross suggested the game happened in a parallel dimension. A notable difference between the two games is that Magus, present in Radical Dreamers as Gil, is absent from Chrono Cross. Director Masato Kato originally planned for Magus to appear in disguise as Guile, but scrapped the idea due to plot difficulties. In the DS version of Chrono Trigger, Kato teases the possibility of an amnesiac Magus. Square began planning Chrono Cross immediately after the release of Xenogears in 1998, which itself was originally conceived as a sequel to the Sins game. Chrono Trigger No Wiki Less Than Slash No Wiki Greater Than S Scenario Director Masato Kato had brainstormed ideas for a sequel as early as 1996, following the release of Square's manager selected a team, appointed Hiramichi Tanaka producer, and asked Kato to direct and develop a new Chrono game in the spirit of Radical Dreamers. Kato thought Dreamers was released in a half-finished state, and wanted to continue the story of the character Kid. Kato and Tanaka decided to produce an indirect sequel. They acknowledged that Square would soon re-release Chrono Trigger as part of Final Fantasy Chronicles, which would give players a chance to catch up on the story of Trigger before playing Cross. Kato thought that using a different setting and cast for Chrono Cross would allow players unfamiliar with Chrono Trigger to play Cross without becoming confused. The Chrono Cross team decided against integrating heavy use of time travel into the game, as they thought it would be rehashing and cranking up the volume of the last game. Masato Kato cited the belief. There's no use in making something similar to before, and noted, we're not so weak nor cheap as to try to make something exactly the same as Trigger, accordingly, Chrono Cross is not Chrono Trigger 2. It doesn't simply follow on from Trigger, but is another, different Chrono that interlaces with Trigger. Kato and Tanaka further explained their intentions after the game's release. Full production began on Chrono Cross in mid-1998. The Chrono Cross team reached 80 members at its peak with additional personnel of 10 to 20 cutscene artists and 100 quality assurance testers. The team felt pressured to live up to the work of Chrono Trigger No Wiki Less Than Slash No Wiki Greater Than S Dream Team Development Group, which included famous Japanese manga artist Akira Toriyama. Kato and Tanaka hired Nobu Yuki for character design and Yasuyuki Hone for art direction and concept art. The event team originally envisioned a short game and planned a system by which players would befriend any person in a town for alliance in battle. Developers brainstormed traits and archetypes during the character creation process, originally planning 64 characters with unique endings that could vary in three different ways per character. Cato described the character creation process, take Pierre, for example, we started off by saying wanted a wacko fake hero like Tata from Trigger. We also said things like we need at least one powerful mom. No way we're gonna go without a twisted brat, and so on and so forth. As production continued, the length of cross increased, leading the event team to reduce the number of characters to 45 and scrap most of the alternate endings. Developers humorously named the character Pip Tsumaru in Japanese, which means packed, as a pun on their attempts to pack as much content into the game as possible. To avoid the burden of writing unique, accented dialogue for several characters, Team member Kiyoshi Yoshi coded a system that produces accents by modifying basic text for certain characters. Art director Nobu Teruyuki initially wanted the characters to appear in a more chibi format with diminutive proportions. The game world's fusion of high technology and ethnic, tribal atmospheres proved challenging at first. He later recalled striving to harmonize the time period's level of technology, especially as reflected in characters' garb.
The Chrono Cross team devised an original battle system using a stamina bar and elements. Kato planned the system around allowing players to avoid repetitive gameplay, also known as grinding, to gain combat experience. Hiramichi Tanaka likened the elements system to card games, hoping players would feel a sense of complete control in battle. The team programmed each battle motion manually instead of performing motion capture. Developers strove to include tongue in cheek humor in the battle system's techniques and animations to distance the game from the Final Fantasy franchise. Masato Kato planned for the game's setting to feature a small archipelago, for fear that players would become confused traveling in large areas with respect to parallel worlds. He hoped El Nido would still impart a sense of grand scale, and the development team pushed hardware limitations in creating the game's world. To create field maps, the team modeled locations in 3D, then chose the best angle for 2D rendering. The programmers of Chrono Cross did not use any existing square programs or routines to code the game, instead writing new, proprietary systems. Other innovations included variable frame rate code for fast forward and slow motion gameplay, awarded as a bonus for completing the game, and a CD read swap system to allow quick data retrieval. Masato Kato directed and wrote the main story, leaving subplots and minor character events to other staff. The event team sometimes struggled to mesh their work on the plot due to the complexity of the parallel worlds concept. Masato Kato confirmed that Cross featured a central theme of parallel worlds, as well as the fate of Shala, which he was previously unable to expound upon in Chrono Trigger. Concerning the ending sequences showing kids searching for someone in a modern city, he hoped to make players realize that alternate futures and possibilities may exist in their own lives, and that this realization would not stop with the game. He later added, paraphrasing one novelist's favorite words, what's important is not the message or theme, but how it is portrayed as a game. Even in Cross, it was intentionally made so that the most important question was left unanswered. Cato describes a finished story as old boy meets girl type of story with sometimes shocking twists. Kato rode his motorcycle to relieve the stress off game's release schedule. He continued refining event data during the final stages of development while the rest of the team undertook debugging and quality control work. Square advertised the game by releasing a short demo of the first chapter with purchases of Legend of Mana. The North American version of Cross required three months of translation and two months of debugging before release. Richard Honeywood translated working with Cato to rewrite certain dialogue for ease of comprehension in English. He also added instances of wordplay and alliteration to compensate for difficult Japanese jokes. To streamline translation for all 45 playable characters, Honeywood created his own version of the accent generator which needed to be more robust than the simple verbal tics of the Japanese cast. Although the trademark Chrono Cross was registered in the European Union, the game was not released in Europe. Chrono Cross was scored by freelance video game music composer Yasunori Mitsuda, who previously worked on Chrono Trigger. Director Masato Kato personally commissioned Mitsuda's involvement, citing a need for the Chrono sound. Kato envisioned a Southeast Asian feel, mixed with the foreign tastes and the tones of countries such as Greece. Mitsuda centered his work around old world cultural influences, including Mediterranean, Fathu, Celtic, and percussive African music. Mitsuda cited visual inspiration for songs, all of my subjects are taken from scenery. I love artwork. To complement the theme of parallel worlds, he gave another in home respectively dark and bright moods, and hoped players would feel the emotions of burning soul, lonely world, and unforgettable memories. Mitsuda and Kato planned music samples and sound effects with the philosophy of a few sounds with a lot of content. Xenogears contributor Tomohiko Kira played guitar on the beginning and ending themes. Noriko Mitos, as selected by Masato Kato, sang the ending song, Radical Dreamers, The Unstolen Jewel. Ryo Yamazaki, a synthesizer programmer for Square Enix, helped Mitsuda transfer his ideas to the PlayStation's sound capabilities. Mitsuda was happy to accomplish even half of what he envisioned. Certain songs were ported from the score of, such as Gale, Frozen Flame, and Viper Mansion. Other entries in the soundtrack contain leitmotifs from Chrono Trigger and Radical Dreamers. The melody of Far Promised Dream Shore features prominently in the dream that time dreams and voyage another world. Masato Kato faced internal opposition in hiring Noriko Mitos. Production required six months of work. After wrapping, Mitsuda and Kato played Chrono Cross to record their impressions and observe how the tracks intermingled with scenes. The ending theme brought Kato to tears. 
players who pre-ordered the game received a sampler disc of five songs, and Square released a three-CD official soundtrack in Japan after the game's debut. The soundtrack won the gold prize for the PlayStation Awards of 2000. In 2005, Square Enix reissued the soundtrack due to popular demand. Earlier that year, Mitsuda announced a new arranged Chrono Cross album, scheduled for release in July 2005. Mitsuda's contract with Square gave him ownership and full rights to the soundtrack of Chrono Cross. It was delayed, and at a play. A video game symphony concert in May 2006, he revealed it would feature acoustic music and would be out within a year, later backtracking and alleging a 2007 release date. Mitsuda posted a streaming sample of a finished track on his personal website in January 2009 and has stated the album will be released to coincide with the 10th anniversary of the Japanese debut of Cross. Music from Chrono Cross has been featured in the September 2009 Symphonic Fantasies Concerts, part of the Symphonic Game Music Concert series conducted by Arnie Roth. The track Dimension Break was remixed by Mitsuda for inclusion on the charity album Play for Japan in 2011. That same year, the Chrono Cross theme Time Scar was voted first place in Hardcore Gaming 101's Best Video Game Music of All Time poll. Time Scar was also featured in 2012 by NPR in a program about classically arranged video game scores. Chrono Cross shipped 850,000 units in Japan and 650,000 abroad. It was re released once in the United States as a Sony Greatest Hits title and again as part of the Japanese Ultimate Hits series. Chrono Cross was also released on the PlayStation Network in Japan on July 6, 2011, and in North America on November 8, 2011, but a PAL region release has not been announced. Critics praised the game's complex plot, innovative battle system, varied characters, moving score, vibrant graphics, and success in breaking convention with its predecessor. Electronic Gaming Monthly gave Chrono Cross a gold award scoring at 10-10-9.5 in their three-reviewer format, the first review declared the game to be a masterpiece, plain and simple. GameSpot awarded the game a perfect 10, one of only 14 games in the 40,000 games listed on GameSpot to have been given the score, and its console Game of the Year award for 2000. IGN gave the game a score of 9.7, and Cross appeared 89th in its 2008 Top 100 Games list. Famsu rated the game 36 out of 40 from four reviewers. Fan reaction was largely positive, though certain fans complained that the game was a far departure from its predecessor, Chrono Trigger. Chrono Cross broke convention by featuring more characters, fewer double and triple techs, fewer instances of time travel, and few appearances of Trigger characters and locations. Producer Hiramichi Tanaka and director Masato Kato were aware of the changes in development specifically intending to provide an experience so different from Chrono Trigger. Kato anticipated and rebuffed this discontent before the game's release, wondering what the Chrono title meant to TC fans and whether his messages ever really got through to them. He continued, Cross is undoubtedly the highest quality Chrono that we can create right now. I won't say the best Chrono, but, if you can't accept that, then I'm sorry to say this but I guess your Chrono and my Chrono have taken totally different paths. But I would like to say, Thank you for falling in love with Trigger so much. Tanaka added, Of course, the fans of the original are very important, but what innovation can come about when you are bound to the past? I believe that gameplay should evolve with the hardware. In 2001, Hironobu Sakaguchi revealed the company's staff wanted to develop a new game and were discussing script ideas. Although Kato was interested in a new title, the project had not been greenlighted. Square then registered a trademark for Chrono Break Worldwide causing speculation concerning a new sequel. Nothing materialized, and the trademark was dropped in the United States on November 13, 2003, though it still stands in Japan and the European Union. Kato later returned to Square Enix as a freelancer to work on Children of Mana and Dawn of Mana. Mitsuda also expressed interest in scoring a new Chrono series game. In 2005, Kato and Mitsuda teamed up to do a game called Deep Labyrinth, and again in 2008 for Sands of Destruction both for the Nintendo DS. The February 2008 issue of Game Informer ranked the Chrono series 8th among the top 10 sequels in demand, naming the game's steadfast legacies in the Square Enix catalog and asking what's the damn holdup? In Electronic Gaming Monthly No Wiki Less Than Slash No Wiki Greater Than S June 2008 Retro Issue, writer Jeremy Parrish cited Chrono as the franchise video game fans would be most thrilled to see a sequel to. In the May 1, 2009, issue of Famp 2, 
Chrono Trigger placed 14th out of 50 in a vote of most wanted sequels by the magazine's readers. At E3 2009, SE Senior Vice President Shinji Hashimoto remarked, If people want a sequel, they should buy more. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.